the first step I always recommend is look at a blank page and then let's start trying to think of that grid. So I already thought of the grid. I know it's a three by three. So to start laying that out, you go to layout and then you have margins and columns. You also have create guides. So your margins and columns, that's going to be these main ones here. And then guides are going to be basically like little rulers that appear. And the cool thing with them is they're not actually there when you print, but anything, any sort of object you put in there will snap to them. So it's really easy to align things or to draw. And we're going to start adding more rows here. So now I have three. And then I'm going to create three columns. And if you notice, there's a gap. And that gap is controlled by this. So I don't know if it'll let me change it out of here. So let me go back. If I right click here, it shows you what, um, what is this called? What units you're using. So whether you're in inches, points, centimeters, pixels. So if we click inches, we go to inches there. So now when I go to layout, create guides. Now these are all in inches, so it's easier to understand based off of, well, it's a lot easier than points, that's for sure. Um, so we have that. So now we'll go to three by three. If you want less of a gap in between like those, you could do that. Or maybe more of a gap here. I don't know. I'm going to leave them there. And then if you notice, um, it can divide the page equally into thirds or if you check this option it will re because notice here that square is the same size as this square which is the same size as that square to the center line but blurb is telling you you can't really use anything past that line if it's text or anything like that so if you change this to to organize it within the margins it will only look in here and divide this space by three equally and so once you have that, you, you're done with that. We can then look at the next page. And so it doesn't have anything on there, right? Because we just applied them to the page. So wouldn't it be nice if we could just create a template or something that anytime we knew we needed that grid, it would just throw it on there, right? So InDesign has that built in. So you have what are called masters. So if we look at our pages, Notice all of them have a little A in the top corner. That's because it's using master A. So there's an A master, and your masters live up here on the top of your layer of all your uh, pages. And if you double click on it, you'll see there's nothing on master A. It just has these little guides. So if we go back to the one where we put where we drew our own, and I select all of them, and I say cut using Control X. Let me move that guy down for you so that you can see it. So now we can right click and say paste in place. So now we put them here on the actual ma master, not on the actual page. And when I go, see now I can see them on every single page that has a master applied. So see they all have it. So that's really useful because now I can come here and say this one needs to be my chapter introduction page. So this one needs to be a little different. Or you could leave it with that same master. So I want this one to be full bleed there. And we said we were going to drag it all the way to here. And then pull it back to there. So then this, we can move it up. So there you go. And then here, I want to write chapter one somehow. So let's say I don't want all these grid lines. I want this one to only have the grid lines down here and get rid of all these grid lines. So if I went to my master and I deleted them off the master, it would delete them off all the pages, right? Because we're using the same master on every page. So what you'll ultimately end up doing is creating a different master for the different main types of layouts. So I would say like your main cover for like the t that chapter would have a master and then like a normal layout would have a master. And let's say maybe if you had like a you wanted to do one layout that was inverted so it had a like the background was black instead of white that would be a good thing to have a master dedicated to like a black version of it. 
But rather than try and create all your masters now and then start changing everything on each one, finish the first one all the way, then just duplicate it and change the two or three settings that would make it different, rather than trying to recreate everything every time. So what else do you think would need to go on the master that would be on every page? So if we look at the, the requirements for the portfolio back in the homework assignment, there are certain things you have to have. And then some of them would appear only sometimes, some of them appear only once ever, and some of them appear on every single page. So anything that would be repetitive, you want to make sure that you have on every page. So here I'll give you a hint. It's like the first thing here. So page numbers should be on every page. So it's super annoying to do page numbers manually, right? So wouldn't it be nice if you could have InDesign do that for you? Same thing with the table of contents. So the main reasoning for what we're going to be doing today in class is so that we tell InDesign that it should know how we can actually want the pages to be numbered and how we want it to start collecting information. So if you think about traditionally, if you just start drawing random words and stuff, when you need to go to create table of contents or any sort of other linked object, there is no way to kind of magically tell software to go and grab that and put it in there. But if we start using these things called paragraph styles, we can have that ability. And you'll see how that works in a second. So I recommend page numbers going on the master because that you know is always going to be the same. And if you end up having an inverted layout, you would have an inverted master. So it would, it would be no different there. That's the only time I could see it. And then maybe if you want to take the page number off of like the main page or something like that or only have it on the right, you would have a master dedicated to that. So right now let's say we're doing a normal layout like this one. So let's make this one look more like that second page. So if I delete this one and then we move this guy over here, you can move this one here and that one there. And then this guy needs to be cropped back to there and we had it full size over there. So here, for some reason that goes way over. There you go. So now notice how if I turn off my guides, just like that, that layout and this layout have some sort of relationship, right? When you look at two of them, like even though there's really not a whole lot there, you've at least established that line that's going to start to organize the two. So let's start going back here. And hit W is the shortcut to make that happen. So it just hides all your like little guides, also the little text box things, and then it sh shows them. So let's go to our master, and since that's the first thing we want to add on there, let's add the page numbers. So what do you think would happen? So you see InDesign here knows this is page 5, right? So if we go to the master, and you write here a text box, and you write number 5, It works on page five, right? But page seven is also has a number five. So rather than putting like a text object on there, what you want to do is put what are called special characters. So whenever you have something like that that you think InDesign should already have a way of knowing that, and you just want to tell it to just bring that to the foreground, you go here instead of drawing this. Let me zoom here because I keep getting confused there. So rather than drawing this, we're going to delete that, and you right click in the text box, you go to insert special character, and what I'm trying to do is mark what page we're on, because we know InDesign has a page number assigned to that already. So if you go to markers, and then you tell it current page number, that's going to tell InDesign you want it to mark the current page with whatever this is on. And notice now it drew, it drew a letter A. So why do you think it drew an A? 
Yeah, right, because the page that you're on is, is master A. So now when we go to the page, see this one is 3 because it's page 3. And when you go down here, it's page 5. And here you're on 7. So whatever number was there, which is the number of that page, is displaying it so that you don't need to do anything else. So anytime you use this, it's going to automatically do it. So now let's start labeling here our drawings because part of the assignment for the portfolio is you got to label every drawing so someone would know kind of what they're looking at. So let's say here I want to start showing you this is the original image. And then this one I'm going to hold alt and copy it over is the desaturated. This one is, I don't know, diagram. Elements one. Because that's not a weird a word in this dictionary. And then over here, we can put this there and call this one final diagram. And maybe here we drag this up a little bit. So if I don't like the way this text looks, you can edit it if you just select it. And then you come up here, you have all your text editing options. So you have, we can pick, I don't know, impact. And then let's say you don't like it bold like that, you want it a different size but notice if we pick a size that we like for this one maybe the color we don't like that color you want a new one that's like 50% gray or something like that so all of these guys aren't matched to that one so what could we do so that all of these would end up looking the same? So there's this really cool tool here in, in InDesign called Styles. So rather than telling InDesign, okay, I'm going to go here, now I'm going to manually go here and change this one, and then manually go there, it would be nice if we could tell InDesign, make them all look like this one. And then if we have like a big chapter title, we could say, look, all chapter titles will look big and bold. And then anytime we have the page number it should look like a page number and anytime you have text that you're writing it should look like that and so that's what's called styles so InDesign works with styles and if you go to window and you look at styles there's a bunch of different types of them so for this the most important one you need to focus on is called paragraph styles so what this will do is allow you to create well, they're called styles, but that's basically how you want the different text boxes to look. And what's important about them is InDesign can now, if you assign a style to a text box, it can always reference and find every time you use that style. So when we start looking at like your table of contents or if you want to automate certain features, it's going to be using mo more often than not the paragraph styles as a way to reference. So if you're not using paragraph styles, you'll be stuck manually doing everything because it's it doesn't know that those need to match. So to create a paragraph style, you can open up this menu. And if you started editing an object and you got it to like where you like it, select it first. Because if you have a text box selected, when you tell it to make a new style, it will use that as the, as the, the starting point. So it will match whatever you have now. So I'm going to call this one... Uh, image titles I guess because I'm gonna put down all the images and then if I open this up I can go here to basic characters and notice that if I change any of this like I make the text larger see that one gets bigger over there because it has that style applied to it but the other ones still don't have any change so what you can do if we move this over so notice how 
when you have this window open and you click on a text box, it highlights what style is applied to it. So that's the easiest way to know if there's a style applied, whether there's nothing or uh, this one's using image titles. So now when we click these, see it just has basic, because that means it doesn't have really a style assigned to it. But if we click all of them, all you have to do is click this one time, and all of them will become the same. So now let's say here I'm having an issue with this one, right? Because that one's too long to fit. So rather than going in here and trying to change it, all you have to do is double click here on the style. So now that you've assigned a style, you never change the text at the source. You always change the style. You can still type different words and stuff, but you're not going to be changing how it looks. So when we go here, you go basic character and you start to shrink these and they will all go together. So imagine you have, right now we just have one chapter, but on this one page we have four text boxes. So imagine you had now a hundred pages, each one might have had four, maybe five text boxes. So if you needed to change all of them again at the end, that's going to take forever if you had to do it one by one. Whereas this way you just change the style and all of them will be updated right away. So that's the main benefit to doing this. And then also that we can then start using this to link back to the table of contents. So I've created image titles. Let's make a version of this for something that we will use here. So, oh, and before I get too far, you want to make sure you're using layers because a lot of people use InDesign but they never use layers and they get super frustrated because it's really hard to select things and it's because everything is in one layer so there's no hierarchy there. Whereas if you make a couple layers it will make your life way easier. So here I've already started making some that we made last class. So I'm going to grab all these guys. Okay they're on text layer. This should be on the graphics layer or images. And then these guys all need to go down to images. So now when you pick them, you can see these ones are green. These ones are like this blue color. And so when I go up here now, this one should be on text. This one should not be on text. It should go down to images. So now whenever I drop this on top, it will always match there. So let's say I wanted this one to go all the way across to there. But now let's say I want this to be a lot bigger, the font. So how would I change this font so that it looks bigger? Change what? So if we do that, that would be correct if we had assigned the right paragraph to this one. Because right now there's, they're all the same. So if I want to make this one bigger, and I start changing here, it will work up here. But notice, since they all have that same style, all of them are going to change. So that's the only downside to doing that. So what you want to do is make a new one now. And then this one is a different use. This will be called the chapter titles. So you can hit OK and then you make sure this one has that assigned to it. So notice these ones have image title. This one's going to get chapter title. So now we can do whatever we want and it won't change the other ones. So it makes it super easy. because You'll get to a point where you've created all the styles you need and you never need to make a new one. You just tell it which one it needs to look like. But at the beginning it's it tricky because you need to change stuff. Um, so now we can make this huge. And we can keep making that bigger. And let's say we want this to be like that. And then the color, let's change it from this color to being white, so that it or the paper, so that it looks like it's cut out. And then here we can write chapter one. And then we can open this up again. So if you go to the basic character settings, that's going to be these. So instead of adjusting them up here, now they all live in here. If you go to advanced, you can adjust here. There's more settings that you can change. So notice how 
even though I had the text box aligned to the bottom, the baseline of the, is, is floating up here. So if I wanted all of these to really align perfectly, you could change here the baseline shift and start moving it down. And notice how my, my words start moving down a little bit. Obviously it's gonna cut off like there, like the P, but that could be okay. Indents and spacing, if you want to indent it from the side, always the same. You can adjust these. And then the most important one is um, justification. No, no, sorry. It's, where am I? Is it here? No. Where is my... Oh, here, indents and spacing. So for some reason I didn't see it when I went back to it. So the alignment here, you can have it be aligned to the left side. You can go center, just like you could before. Full justify. So that could be kind of cool. Towards spine or away from spine will be dependent on which one it started on. So full justify here. And then now let's make this even bigger. So let's make that text box taller. And then let's go in here. Maybe not that tall. And let me make this like huge. And now our baseline shift needs to go up down more. So now when we view that without anything, it looks like that. Oh, and maybe we need to push this over more. You can see there it's not perfectly aligning. So that you could go in here and tell it Will that let you do anything? No. So you can't go outside of it, but you could push I think there is a way to get it right on there, but we can always do this. So it looks like that. So chapter one there. And then I want text right here, like a description, because each one will have like text. So we can make a new, well, let's grab this one just because it's white. It's closer to what I would want. So actually that guy's in the right spot. So you can do this copy and here you just paste in place. And this guy I'm going to stretch down. And then I'm going to make a new style here that's going to be called the body text. Because body is like the text that you'll be writing like and filling with stuff. So this one should be smaller. So let's say like 10 or 12. And then there's this really neat tool within... So that guy's there. So I might end up overlapping with that guy. where if you want to make it look like text just so that you can lay it out correctly and not write this which I see a lot of people do so they'll write the word text and then they like paste it a million times so people will do that and then when you look at their board it never looks like real text it just looks like columns of the word text so rather than do that you delete this, you fill it with placeholder text. So if you right click and you go right here, this will fill in with like Latin. So you can't really tell what it is. And every time you do it again, it will give you, so if we select it all, if it doesn't work the way you like, you just do it again. And then see now it's gonna totally write different stuff. The benefit is when you look at it from far away, 
it's going to look like the way text would actually look. So you can use that as a tool to lay out your layout and see if you actually like the way that looks. What's the name of this? This is called placeholder text. There is, or lorem ipsum. Sometimes you find that it's like online. It's basically like an old Latin script that they've just copied, and then they automate it so they can just generate random parts of it. And then to get it, you just in any text box. You right click and say fill with placeholder text. And it will do that for you. So here we can then go back. The benefit to that is once you have that in there, we can use this when we're laying out our font so that we know if it's spaced out enough or if it needs more or if I change this to a different one. Let's say this one. So maybe this one looks totally different now, and I need different spacing than the last one. Or maybe you want italic, I don't know, regular. And then if you like that, there's also, like you can adjust here, um, like how if you want it to hyphenate, if you want it to be um, aligned to the left, to the center. And then there's these ones, which are really useful. It's either towards spine or away from spine. So the benefit with those is you can have text boxes on opposite layouts. So if you think about it, our page number is going to have this issue too. So right now, away from spine, see here, oops, how it's aligned on the right side. If I grab this and I drag it over here, it stays to the right side. But as soon as you go to the other page, it will jump to the left side because it's it's actually aligning away from the spine. So that's how that's set up. So here we could have text there. And here's another really cool one you can do. If you lose all these, if you wanted to do text like this, like all the way. You can have, so let's delete all the text out of this one. So let's say you wrote like a whole bunch of stuff in Word and you had like a whole essay or something like that you wanted to bring over to your layout. If we, so let me just paste this like four times so it definitely won't fit. So see when it doesn't fit, you get an error down here and then when you select the text box, you get a little plus sign there. That tells you that the text that you're using is not all fitting within the, the constraints of this. So there's this really neat tool where if you click actually right on that plus, it sticks this to your mouse. And now if you click on any other text box, it will flow the text right into that one. So you can, so I know here I have this one, and then I have this one, and then here I have that one. And I don't remember how many times I did it, so there may not be enough space here. So now what I can do, if I start to edit the text on this one, I'm all reversed now because of the Mac. If I just hold down delete on this one, you'll notice it starts pulling from all the other ones too. To, oh, it's, you just click right there. So let me show you. So if you undo, it's once it, it doesn't fit in a text box, you get this little plus sign here. And then you just click right on it. And then it sticks on your mouse like that. And now you click into another box. You have to have a box that's there. Or if not, it just does a huge thing like that. So let's say I don't want all that. I just want the first one that we had at the beginning. Oh, it's all the paste. So there's my layout. 
So I could look at it like that and say whether I like that or not. It's kind of cool because that gets kind of like soft there because of the number. And then here is soft but it's hard on the side. And it aligns nicely with my page number. So now I want page numbers on both sides. But on this layout, I only want the page number on the right side. And it could be like bold. So, but on these sides, I don't want it on both sides. So if I go back to my master A, let's fix this one. So I need to put it over here too. And notice here, it's aligned on the right side. So when I go to my page, it's going to look weird because my page number is in the middle there. So what I want is to change this one so that it's aligned on the outsides. So if we go to paragraph style, we create one for page numbers. And then you go under indents and spacing away from spine. And now we applied it to that one. And then you click this guy and just give them page number. And so now I can I don't even have to be on this master. I can just go to the page and I can actually edit that page number using the paragraph style. That's what's really cool with the styles. You can change them anywhere and it will apply wherever that's being affected because all these text boxes are basically referencing that style. And if that style ever changes, then they automatically update. You don't have to go to wherever you drew them and then change it. So if I go page number now, we can say, so let me zoom in on it so we can actually see it kind of nicer. So page number, I'm going to go to basic, maybe we make it a little bigger, maybe we do something with like a different type of number, I don't know. Let's say we like that one. And then you don't want that color. You want that lighter color we made, this one. And then you hit OK. So now if we go to our page, to the master, it's already updated. And now we can start to modify this to pull it down more. So if you're happy with that, it doesn't really need to be that long. Here's the cool thing you can do. If you have two objects, let me copy this like that. If you want to align them, you can select both. So I can pick that guy and this guy. And then up here you have all these align tools. So if you, if you click one of these, you can align like the right side. And then that's a really fast way to get that to go where you need it. So now when we look at this page, that's all that's on it. And so let's say we want a different layout for this one. Maybe you want to do um, no guides on this one and no page number. So you can make a master B that is for the chapter introductions and then that way you can just select this one you right click you say duplicate master spread a it becomes B and then here we don't need these so I can delete those and here I don't need these I can delete those oops I need that one and maybe I don't want the page on this one so now when I go to this page does it see it's still there and the reason is it still has master A applied to this one. So as soon as we drag master B onto that one, you'll see the page number went away and all those guides went away. So now it only has what was on B. So here we still have all those guides. That's because we haven't dragged this one onto there. The other way you can do it is you right click, say apply master to pages, and then you choose which one you want, A or B. And there you go. So now we have this nice and clean. So I didn't turn off that one on B. So maybe B, we don't want this one, but we do want it over here. So let's do this, delete that one. I have it on A where I like it. 
and then here you paste in place. So there we go. We have it there, but not there. But on this page, it's on both because it stayed there. So then if you needed to write text on this one, you can copy. You can go here and say paste in place. And maybe this one you drag down a little. So here, it wants to be aligned on the left side. So then we might change our layout so that we have it aligning there. Or you could leave it like that. Any questions on that? So I wrote in that description like what types of paragraph styles I recommend having at least. And so oh maybe here I even add this here. Like so we have let's say like here these are all in la labeling like the actual images. So maybe here I make another version of this that is like a subheading. So here I can make another one. And this one could be called subheadings. Whoa, it's all like weird. And then the main difference will be that this one will be that lighter gray. And then the size will be way smaller. Maybe we do left justify, and then we can go, let's pick like a really thin font. Something like that. And then maybe we, we space it way out, something like this. I'm just making up stuff. I don't know if it'll look good or not. So we say, okay. And then this one, we then change this to be, so chapter one. So then we could write here, Frank's vacation. And obviously that's not going to fit. So then we go here. Maybe we turn that down. Oops. Why isn't it changing? Oh, it's letting. Letting is vertical space in between two rows. So there's only one row, so it wouldn't ever change. And that looks too big compared to our title. Does this have other weights? Maybe we like this one here. Where the heck did it go? I was working on the Mac all day today, so it's kind of reversed. I keep hitting command instead of control, and it does whatever that is. Why the heck is that so big?
kind of cool. Does this make sense? So the cool thing with this is once you have it kind of laid out, you can duplicate these spreads. And then for the next chapter, you could change out like what's going on there. And then, so let's say this one should have really been, so we can grab all of this and say copy. Let's paste it in place here. So let's say that's where chapter two should be starting. So here it is, is chapter two. And then this one is, there's diagrams down there. So maybe I just name this one like diagram study. So that's one of those cases where it's good to have the style because if I get to like chapter 10 or whatever and then I realize there's no way to shrink the word small enough to fit across there, then I can shrink the, the font size at the end. It'll always be dictated by whichever word is longest or whichever phrase is longest because that's the one you'll need to scale everything else to. And then here, you can then replace this image with whatever you need it to be. And there you go. See, it looks like a totally different chapter, but it didn't really take any extra work. So the, the hardest part is the first one. And let's say we want to make this one our renderings now. You can swap this one out to... I think I saved it in here. Oops. Here. If you have it selected, it should just drop it right in there. There you go. And if you click and hold on this circle, like you can move this around and you can actually see like a ghost image of what it was like around it. So I can see it's big, so maybe I can put it there. You click on it once and then drag this back so you can try and fit it a little bit better. Here, if you want to zoom in. And the, the most important thing here is showing whether it's something like consistent or across the other ones. But here, I'm going to turn off Oh, I forgot to make my group up. Stuff. I'm going to assume that's where we started making a nighttime. Ah, that was pretty close. Something looks super weird here. But that's in there. I think it could shrink it a little bit. I mean, you can do this. Like if I move this one up, copy this one over so it aligns. Just get rid of those. And then on this one, you can. Those were all on. These are on. my diagram on. So that one is probably like a random layer. One of these is his light, which I think we made after, so it would be layer 7. So let's see if this was right. Haha, <laughs> I got it. So we've got that there, and then let's say like you wanted to show, I don't know, like only the background. 
like the trick is you want to get rid of that one and always copy the one you've already made well actually we would want this one's closer already because we've already turned everything off so in here oh, I don't need to do any of that I need to right click on it for some reason it makes this like the smallest thing ever So it's probably these guys. Oh no, that's the dude jumping over. There you go. So that's something. Or if I only want one of those, let's see if we can get it down. So you can see how like you could quickly get whatever you want to control out of it. So for you guys, what you'll have is like the individual little pieces. Like if you wanted to do um, like you'll have to have Shrank, blah, Frank Shack in here. So we can add that. So we can grab these guys. And then here we could where the heck oh I've got more than one selected. So there's a shack in space. I wonder what that tree was called. See, I didn't label anything, so who knows? Am I in a commander somewhere? And this, so I was just thinking. Oh no, my InDesign crashed. I don't remember the last time I saved that. It's because I opened the Photoshop that it was trying to change. But that tree is called. There are one, I guess. It's weird. Let's see what we got. Sometimes InDesign is good about saving. But who knows? Ha! Look at that. We're like maybe one step away. So let's save. So the only thing we missed was we moved these guys up to our guide. There it is. So then this one was just Frank Shack. And the way I isolated it was I found the name. And then you hold Alt and click on the eyeball, which will it will reverse the settings for all the other layers. So it just isolates that one. And then here. We said it's called layer one. And then maybe here we have That's one of the lights. Where? But you could do something like this, and then you could have these labels. Here. Frank 
Shag. This one was called Dead Tree. And we light. So you can have all those on. And if you have something like this where you can't see the edge, I always recommend giving it like a small little stroke. Like it could be like that or you can even go smaller. Just something so that you can see like the edge. To see like how much easier it is to understand now that that's something that was in the image. And you can change the line type here. So you can go like dotted or it's impossible to see. So you can do, if you do the bottom dashed, so the normal dashed will do that, and you can't really read it very well. So maybe we go a little bit more. See, I only see going like whole increments, but something like that might be cool. So then these would obviously need to shift up a little. Does that make sense? So that's pretty much it. And then when you're done, you save. And then the cool thing is once you've done the first one, you're not going to be doing all that work that we set up at the beginning. So the portfolio is going to be a lot of work for this first assignment. But then after that, it should be really like you're bringing the stuff that you've made and you're, you're using this as a way to kind of quickly lay it out. Because a lot of like the design work will be done now, and then if you do a good job, it makes it super easy the more you do. And believe it or not, the portfolios that look the best are usually the ones that do the least amount of work, because like they're really consistent. So like they just keep consistent all the way through. Whereas the ones that kind of don't do this and just kind of throw whatever each time, like it's hard, they don't really like read very well as you go through the whole thing. I have a bunch of examples if you guys want to see. And then I have a couple books like here that you can look at. Um, one of them is actually exactly what I was doing here on the board, which is this one. So if you look, this one has a bunch of layouts and it has like the diagram for the layout. So if you haven't flipped through this one yet, check it out because it shows you the basic layout and a bunch of versions of it and how it can it all relates back to that little diagram. So this one's really cool. These ones are, are pretty good too. This one does the same thing, but not just with portfolios. Looking at like all sorts of other things like graphic design, and architecture, nature, furniture, and poster boards, stuff like that. So it's all like the same exercise. And then here's a bunch of other portfolios if you want to look at. Is there anything, any other questions that you're either stuck on or wondering about or it wasn't clear? Does it make sense? Yes? Okay. Well, if you don't have any questions, you're pretty good. If not, stick around. If you want to check any of these out. Be, do a good job laying out the portfolio now because it'll, it'll pay off the rest of the semester. The worst thing you could do is just not do it at all and then just turn in random things, which a lot of people do. And then when you get to the last week, your like studio is in finals, like your other classes are in finals, and then when this class has like a portfolio due. So I try and make it due before all your finals, but if you haven't done anything, you'll be stuck with like working a lot on this. Whereas if you do it now as you're going, it becomes really easy. At the end, all you need to do is tweak like all those styles, and then you create the table of contents, which if you, you, you need to make sure you're using those paragraph styles. 
I set them up the way I recommend here, where it's kind of what I did in class, where I say you should have at least these ones. So, because if you do these as a minimum, it will work perfect when you get to the end. So you have the chapter headings. So this would be like project one or one week in class I called chapter one. And then the subheading, which is the one I called Frank's vacation. And then body text. And then another one for your headers or footers. So let's say I wanted to make it say like my name at the bottom of every page. That could go on the master as another style. So if we go to the master here, we could make one if you didn't want it to match this we can make a version of this called footer or header if you want to do it at the top and this can be and let's just center it and make it even smaller. And then this could say When you see that purple line, that means it's actually centered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't. So what you need to do, so let me put here my name. So now when I go to my pages, so it will, that would show up at the bottom. And the reason you want different uh, paragraph styles is because you'll see once we start doing all the automation, you need InDesign to know what stuff you want to reference. And if everything has the same style, it's like it can't figure it out because everything is the same. Whereas if you start doing different styles, then you can reference them in. You don't have to redo any work. So it'll make perfect sense later. So if you're trying to do different master to like, let's say you want to convert this one to be, you can either pick which page you want and right click and say apply master to pages and so here it's six and seven so we can say six and seven and then you can say B master and see it changed or you can do it this way where you just you, you look in this little window and you find the one you want so now I want to put it back to A and you just drag it right on there Oops. I think if you land, there's a way to get it to go on both. Or you can just put it on individual ones. Why sometimes when you, uh, you put an image in, in design and it does not look good, good quality and when you put there is not? It's because what you're seeing here is just a preview. It's not the actual image. So when you zoom in, even on any of these, see how like pixelated they are? Mm -hmm. If you actually needed to align something, let's say like you wanted to put an arrow and make sure you were pointing right at Frank, like you could draw a line. And then like if I wanted to make sure it got on them and not miss, what I always say is you should do this. So let me show you here. Stroke, give it like an cap. like that. So if you're not sure if that's actually hitting them, you can right click and you go to display performance and see it should be set to use the view setting, which the view setting is like a global setting, but you can override it using one of these. So right now that by default it should always be on typical. So if it's set to use view setting it always be like this. It's just it's meant to be kind of fast. And then if you want to see it better you hit the high quality and now you'll see it actually looks a little bit closer and now I can see it didn't really go right on them you, it's view quality so I could do that now and then 
if I wanted to see it back the other way, you right click, display performance, and then you can either say view setting or typical or whichever one you want. The problem with that is if it's a really big file or you have a lot of them and you keep making all of them high quality, it might run a little slower. It's usually worse with like really big like CAD files and stuff like that that it has to draw a lot of stuff. Usually something like this, unless it was a humongous like Photoshop file or something like that, then you're usually okay. It, but typically if you're not on that page, you don't need it to be high quality, so you can let it go back to the standard one. And if it's really slow, even like that, you can use this one, the fast, and that just shows you like this, like an X. And then the image is there, but it's just a placeholder. And if you want to change what the default one is, it's up here under display performance, I think. And then that's the one it's set to use always by default. If I make it always use fast, see all of them will show like that. Or you can locally override one. So if it starts going really slow for some reason, you can change that setting and hopefully it will speed it up and then you find the ones you need to edit. But I've never had a project go that big. And I've done really big books, like 400 page ones, and it hasn't. I've never had to do this. But for some people that just do the, the text and they just need it to do that, then it, it definitely goes faster. So there you go. Yep. And if you have any questions when you're working on stuff, just shoot me an email or...